Thank you all for coming. Thank you, Brian, for having the event, as always. Uh, I would like to know who here has heard about Alexandria? Three? OK, that's a good start. Um, I will go over a short history of the project, kind of give you an overview of the problem we're trying to solve, and then let you know what we've been building and um, show a nice video to help explain things. So this is Alexandria. It is uh, decentralized media publishing and access using an open distributed index. Essentially, um, what we wanted to do was to solve the problem of centralized media distribution, all of the restrictions and control mechanisms that come with it. We started um, using the Florin coin blockchain. It's what we we're building on. And I'll go more into how we use that blockchain for the index in a minute. We're using IPFS for file storage. And uh, we currently support payments in Bitcoin, Florin coin, and we just integrated the Coinbase widget so people can pay for media with their credit cards too. Uh, it currently supports audio, video, HTML, images, documents, and 3D printable objects. All of these things can be published to the index and retrieved off of IPFS. Our first public demo was in October 2014 at the Inside Bitcoins conference in Las Vegas. And then we released our first alpha uh, in April 2015. And since then, we've been very busy. And I will explain what we've been doing. Um, oh, all of our code is on GitHub. You can check it out. It's an open source project. We are community funded and a very small community of developers, designers, and all sorts of other individuals who are bringing their services to the table. Uh, and then we just support each other, friends and family contributions and that. So this is the problem that we're facing. We have currently on the web, media distribution is confined to these individual silos and the organizations that build these systems control the distribution and the payment for uh, any kind of media which they support. They also come with various restrictions based on their, um, their server capabilities or just their target audience. YouTube, Vimeo, iTunes, and SoundCloud all have these control mechanisms. Artists are never in control of their actual media content, and they're never really, and users nor artists are in control of the media that they're allowed to consume. So there's censorship, there's filters put on the systems by the, the central hubs. And now I'll show you a video. We'll see if you all can hear this. And if you're curious to watch it afterwards, it's also in the library. You can browse it at alexandria.io. Click on Browse, and you can pull the video up that way. Protocol is a standard for how to use a blockchain and a different. The Open Index Protocol is a standard for how to use a blockchain Jeez. and a decentralized. OK, one more time. No, it's just for Her publish fee. 
Sam syncs a local copy of the index blockchain, so he'll see when new published messages are added. He sees that Alice's message includes a request for paid storage and distribution, so the file is downloaded from Alice, and when cryptographic proof is sent that Sam is storing and distributing it, he gets paid for his work. Bob is browsing a front-end application that displays the contents of the Open Index protocol. He's a big fan of Alice, so he's excited when he sees she's published new content. Bob pays Alice in Bitcoin, receives the file from Sam, and it's immediately available for him to watch. Because every component of the Open Index protocol is fully decentralized, Izzy and Sam are just two participants in a Hydra-like network of service providers. This fully decentralized architecture is both efficient and redundant, making the Open Index Protocol distinctly anti-fragile. For more information, visit alexandria.io. Okay, so I don't know if any of you could actually hear that, but I'll go through. <laughs> People in the front could, that's good. Um, I will go through in detail more of what these different characters play and their roles and kind of uh, show you some use cases that we've built. So let's go back to my slides. Um, so the story starts with Alice, who is a publisher and wants to publish something. It, it could be anything, like I said, images, videos, audio documents. And uh, what we show in the demo is the front end that Alice or any content creator interacts with when publishing something. And this is um, completely up to the front end developer. It, it's really arbitrary. The important part is this is what the message actually looks like when it gets submitted to the library daemon, which does the chunking that was mentioned. So this is all done on the back end. The front end fills in all of these details. Um, publisher address would be a florin coin address, what type of media it is. Any meta content or metadata that we want people to be able to search by is in here descriptions, tags, as well as pricing information that Alice would want to include, suggested price, minimum price. I'll get more into some of these details later. And uh, which tokens to be accepted. It's all signed, put the signature down here because there wasn't room. So it's signed with the hash address for the files, the uh, publisher address for the metadata, and the timestamp. This goes into a mechanism that we built called Library Daemon, or Library D, which then breaks it up because Florin Coin allows for 528 characters in a transaction comment that actually goes into the blockchain. So the Library Daemon break, broke this up into three separate messages. Each one has the address for the publisher. It has a reference to the first message, and then each one is also signed. And you can see in here the title, the uh, hash for the IPFS files. So everything that our API needs in order to build a database that's searchable, browsable, and make the contents actually play back is all in the blockchain in clear text. So Izzy is a blockchain miner. Um, I'm not going to go into too much information on blockchain mining right now because that's not what we're here for. Uh, but there's all that information is online. The short end of it on Florin Coin, it, uh, it's a script uh, proof of work algorithm. And like I said, 528 characters in the transaction comment. It also has a 40 second block time. So there's benefits for the publisher there. And uh, the token that is attached in this case is Florin Coin, but we will be changing that to uh, be flexible because it's an open source project and I think that there are a lot of other blockchains that have potential to store these indexes, uh, different features that different users will want. So we can actually point this to different networks and build indexes from different blockchains. Um, then that payment can also be traded with something we built called TradeBot. So while Alice does need to pay with the actual index token to get that, that message into the blockchain, that token can be purchased from miners with TradeBot via Bitcoin. So if Alice wants to spend Bitcoin to get the transaction in, but it has to go into the Florin Coin blockchain, then she can pay with Bitcoin. That gets traded into Florin Coin, gets sent back to her from a, from a 
uh, trade bot node, and then that Florin coin is sent with the transaction. Likewise, Izzy can use TradeBot to get paid out in Bitcoin instead of Florin coin after those coins are mined. The storage is really important. Um, if it's going to be a decentralized system, you need redundant decentralized storage. So uh, we started working with IPFS. And again, that will be um, noted in the transaction comment if a publisher wants to use a different network, something like that or uh, torrent, you can use the torrent DHT as well. So what Sam does is runs uh, library D again, and that is what looks at the blockchain, puts the message, those multi-part messages back together, and then returns any new artifacts that have been published to the index. Now Sam can filter based on a certain publisher that Sam likes, or perhaps um, certain pricing options. So if you have an artist that wants to pay a lot for, for the file storage, then Sam can watch just for those that fit the financial, uh, the desired financial payback for whatever it is that they're storing. Um, likewise, an organization like the Internet Archive could decide to support uh, Creative Commons and automatically run this, uh, this software that we call Pinbot, and Pinbot does, can watch for certain content that's all creative content, certain content that is, um, or creative commons, and certain content that is by certain publishers, whatever filter they want, and uh, support the library in that way. And we've been talking to the Internet Archive about this for quite some time. So the token that Sam is getting paid in, right now we do not have a payment mechanism built first for storage. We're planning on it, and we're kind of building the... Um, we're, we're building the interfaces for it now, but uh, our original idea was to use Filecoin, which runs on IPFS and proves that a certain file is actually being shared by an individual who says they're sharing it, and then they get paid in Filecoin. Sam can use TradeBot to trade that Filecoin out for Florin coin or Bitcoin or whichever currency Sam decides to use. So Bob is a Bitcoin user, can really be any cryptocurrency user as long as we build support into the protocol. And the front end that Bob experiences can be any because we uh, really want to see extra front ends um, come out and develop besides the one that we're just building. And if you check out our website, you can see our demo front end that really just shows off a lot of these user interface features. And we plan on rebuilding that soon. So Bob's experience can be as simple as using any of these other services like iTunes, uh, like SoundCloud and, and YouTube. It's all up to the developers to build that interface. And I believe the best thing is to abstract the cryptocurrencies as far away from the end user as possible until they actually want to interact with that, that aspect of it. So back to Alice for one second, because I want to point out that you probably can't see this on the video, but um, there's file hosting service, which can be turned on. These are all opt-in features for content creators. So if the content creator wants to pay for extra file hosting, and that would go to Sam, that user, then an option can be set here for how much, and that would be either a percentage of each sale or a flat rate. And then we have a promotions option. There's bounties for people, and that would be individuals who share Alice's content on um, decentralized social media, just like Steemit or like Decent or Akasha or even centralized sites like Medium. So this would be another percentage on sales um, where if someone writes a review of Alice's work, posts the embedded video into their Medium blog, then a portion of the sales from that site would go back to the, uh, the person who shared it. Same is for, true for front-end uh, designer developers and designers who build their own front-ends. And right now we're working with Tokenly to develop one front-end. We have our demo front-end, and uh, we kind of imagine this being really useful for targeted uh, audiences, for someone who has their own website can create a recommendation algorithm based on the content, geolocation, web browser history, whatever they like. And if users like their features, go to their site and discovers all of this new content, then that front-end developer would get a portion according to what the 
content creator actually determines. So that is the open index protocol. That's what we've been working on since our alpha released uh, in April 2015. And um, the next steps for what we'll be doing now that we have this background stuff built is building a, a piece of software we call Librarian, which allows users to turn on, off and on all of the different network features that they want. So you can easily spin up an IPFS daemon, the Florin coin wallet, Bitcoin wallet, all of these things. So as a user, you have power over how much decentralization you want. And, how, and if you value centralization for certain points, you can do that through the client using the librarian. And this can also be launched on a web server. And along with our front end code, um, you can operate a full node of Florin coin of IPFS along with gateways all on your web server and essentially run a decentralized node with central gateway access. Uh, for whatever website you want, including words, WordPress blogs and things like that. Uh, yeah, so that's what we've done. This is me. Uh, you can GitHub, Copernicus Mowgli, Twitter, and YouTube, Agileek. Thank you. <laughs> Brian. Uh, it hasn't really come to fruition yet. That's, that's really the only reason that we have switched is um, Filecoin just hasn't happened yet. When we switched to IPFS, um, originally we were using BitTorrent. We were using the mainline DHT for all of our file storage. And we, then we, right before we released our alpha, we discovered IPFS, switched over immediately, and, uh, and started building for that because it was so much more powerful and it, it served the content that we needed better. Um, and then at that point, we were thinking Filecoin uh, Protocol Labs was working on it quite a bit. And then they kind of put it on the back burner, switched to other things. And it was my understanding they were looking for, a, uh, for an implementation, for a use case for it. And I believe just recently they've been talking about using Ethereum and launching it there. Um, so yeah, we're open to whatever, though. And we're constantly looking for, uh, for different solutions to this. As with everything that we're doing, it's all open source, and we're very aware that all of these different projects are happening. So we want to be able to support the end users as well as the developers of all of these different things. Yeah, what about Florin coin? Why, why that? Um, Florin coin. Well, we started working on this back in 2014 when um, we were in the Ethereum Skype chats, actually, and the the Ethereum website had a countdown on it, and that was it. So we wanted something that we could start working on, something that we could actually start integrating and building, because this index was kind of where we were building it to, uh, growing towards, and the bigger pieces of the protocol being how does the how does the miner integrate with the storage, and, and how are the two end, how do the, the two different types of end users interact with this? So um, yeah, so we wanted to start working on that right away. We wanted to start solving some of these problems. Florin Coin was already live, which got us away from any of the ICO questions. We didn't want there to be a pre-mine of any kind that we were working on. Um, so we went with Florin coin, 40 second block times, 528 characters for the transaction messages. It just fit what we wanted. Um, and it's still cheap, so we can build on it. <laughs> so it's uh, Florin coin, you're running on the main chain, and basically, presumably, that's what keeps it alive. That's what keeps it alive. Yeah, yeah. At this point, Florin Coin is um, what's keeping it alive, and uh, it's just we've just been testing mostly. So I think about a quarter of the artifacts. There's 422 uh, last time I checked things that have been published. I think about a hundred of them are mine. <laughs> um, I put all the videos that I make and everything on there just to kind of test it, make sure it's working and things. Um, we have been asked very frequently why we're not using Ethereum, and like I said, it wasn't ready when we wanted it. And now I, I think that it might be too expensive um, for some of the processing and things like that. And keeping it as simple, I'm a big fan of dumb contracts. So this seems to be kind of working for us for now, at least. Do you expect any limitation concerning the number of artists or users you can handle? Uh, well, blockchains have scalability problems, They're definitely. There's no denying that. And putting this much metadata into a blockchain, it could potentially aggravate that and uh, make it quite, quite a bit worse. So one thing that we're exploring is um, use, uh, 
taking the giant JSON object and putting it through a compression algorithm to get it down to a blob that can easily and by anyone be decrypted and uh, loaded into the database. And we'll provide the tool to do that. It'll be part of library D, which you can just run, point it at the blockchain, and it will pull all of that content and make the local database. All of this, these applications actually run off of the local database that's built from the blockchain. They don't actually just hit the blockchain every time they want information. So there's a, the daemon in the background syncs it, builds the database, and then provides the APIs for searching, browsing, and playback. Um, so you mentioned that Sam hosts the file. Can the file be split? Can, does Sam have to host the entire file, or can he still get some chunks? That will come down to a question about the, the payment mechanism that we use. Um, so Sam right now will need to, for the file to be accessible, each, each um, as far as IPFS goes, you take all of the files that you want to add to this artifact. It can be, for example, an album, and you have 10 music tracks on there, plus a picture for the cover art, plus a PDF of the, some art that you would normally put into a CD, but we don't have those anymore. So um, all of those files go into a folder. The hash of that folder is what's put into the blockchain. And in, with IPFS, all you need is that hash, and you can get the list of files inside. And then each file, the name is referenced in the blockchain. So we have that ability to link to any of them. So as far as the network works, Sam will need to host the entire folder, the whole artifact. Um, but how much you want to host, what you want to host, is entirely up to each individual user. Choice was a really big thing for us. So who decides um, who decides who how the, the payment works for no, or I'm, I'm concerned about Sam going offline. Oh right. The data is no more rigid. Right. And so um, what we've done to solve this problem immediately is uh, our publishing interface actually uploads any files that you want to publish onto our node, and this will be part of the architecture of the system. So Anyone who is hosting a front-end node will have servers that they will allow users to upload to, and then it gets added. And so with, in our case, it gets uploaded to the Alexandria servers. From there, it gets added to IPFS and pinned to three different servers um, on the IPFS network, uh, three different nodes. And so that way, the act, like Alice would be able to turn off her computer, and it would be fine. Um, like I said, we're talking to Internet Archive, so we're talking to altruistic nonprofits to kind of help us with some of this content. And then um, for the paid content, that's where uh, something like Filecoin will come into play. So if, what Filecoin does is it actually checks to make sure that file is available before Sam gets paid. If Sam's computer is off, then it looks somewhere else to it. So we're hoping a combination of these things of community support for creators and um, and then the, the financial incentive to store files will, will solve that. Yeah. So what if, uh, what, uh, I'm, not, I don't, I'm not sure I understood when Sam gets paid. Does he, does he get paid when, he's, when the data is stored or when it's retrieved from him? When it's requested. Okay. So when, it, when it's retrieved. And that would be, um, that's according to the Filecoin spec as far as I understand it. Um, but like I said, right now there's no payment for storing files. Um, we've just simply built the mechanism to watch the, the library for new content, and you, based on certain filters, you can share things. Um, you can pin things in that way. Once we add the payment mechanism, then uh, it, I believe it will be when the file's requested, because if Sam's not really doing any work, then Sam shouldn't get paid. <laughs> Oh, very good question. So, <laughs> what are the legal ramifications for storing, let's say, copyright infringing content um, on your machine? And I assume you're talking about Sam here, so it's, it's not something that Sam actually published. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I, I do know that IPFS uh, has some protections so that uh, 
I believe the way that it works is that you cannot identify which user is specifically sharing these files. Um, once you identify a user, then you can identify what they're sharing. So there's some sort of, um, there's some sort of problem there. We aren't stuck to IPFS. We could look at other things. Uh, I, I like the look of DAT. It looks like a very good system for distributing files and things. So in that case, if we're using multiple distributed hash table networks, then each one will have its own privacy, uh, privacy features. And there could be a problem. Now, where your question comes into play is only if the files on your machine are stored in the clear in a way where uh, where the rest of the network can see what you're what you're sharing, and I, I would honestly tell people don't share something if if it's illegal, um, that, and that that's is what we tell people. If you publish something through Alexandria, it's using a blockchain. It's it, you're sharing it on your network. It's very likely that that could be public, that could be traced back to you, um, because blockchains are not very secure uh, or private, rather, um, with the exception of something like like Zcash. So. Um, what we'll be doing is uh, the same thing that IPFS does to kind of deal with this problem at first, and that is abiding by DMCA takedown notices. And we can make sure that if once it's on our server, if someone comes to us and says, hey, you have to take this down because it is just totally wrong, it's illegal, whatever, then we can, take, we can block the actual transaction ID for that artifact from the library. So that artifact will not go into the database. And if it does, then we can take it down. Um, that blacklist would be a plain text file open source on our GitHub repo. So it could also be deleted or changed for any specific, any individual user as they see fit. Kind of use it at your own risk, I guess. <laughs> Sorry if that's not what you were looking for. <laughs> Yeah, it could possibly, Blockstack could possibly work. Um, we're very open to working with as many of these projects as we can. The blockchain space is just phenomenal. The, the, de the decentralized application space is getting going really fast right now. And, uh, and there are a lot of other projects. There's, there's LBRY that's trying to do something similar to what we're doing. Um, there's Media Chain. There's Ujo. There's all of these other projects. And we're open to talk and to, uh, to communicate and to collaborate with all of them. It's just a matter of whether they want to collaborate with us or not. Some of them have funding, so working with these guys who are just building their own thing for free, uh, it's not really interesting to them. <laughs> but uh, yeah, but Blockstack, I'm definitely stoked about what they're doing. And uh, I'll look more into how we can integrate for sure. Any other questions? No? Okay. Thanks, everyone.